Yeah. All right. We'll start off with Mike Trudell. Hey, Tres, before the game, uh, Frank had referenced uh, a chat with you just about kind of, you know, starting lineup versus coming off the bench and, and playing time and all that. Did, was there anything that stood out to you and about the, the comfortability maybe with coming off the bench as you've done the last couple of years and, and if that played into your thinking with the conversation? Um, honestly, I feel better coming off the bench. I get to see the game. I get to see the floor of the game. I get to see, um, you know, how certain things are being called, um, honestly. So, uh, you know, I just felt more comfortable coming off the bench so I can actually get a feel for the game. I don't want to go in there and put myself in early foul trouble and uh, have us undermanned um, more than we already are. What did you think the difference was in tonight's game as you guys you know, tried to learn to play together on the fly in a sense, just with what the rotations were and sort of the chemistry that you started to find with Shooter um, as things got down to the end of crunch time there? Uh, honestly, I think it was a good game, man. Um, guys were able to, you know, get outside their comfort zone and do a couple more things um, than they're accustomed to doing in their game. Um, you know, we played a tough game. Uh, you know, the ball was popping around early in the first quarter, um, kind of died down a little bit. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, we still put ourselves in a uh, great chance and great opportunity to win the game. Um, you know, DS got a great look uh, towards the end. Um, honestly, I got an even better look and, uh, you know, literally just um, didn't get off my feet and uh, left the show in the rim, man. Um, there was a lot of chaos around there. I tried to just keep it alive. And then when I instantly, you know, kind of got it in my hands after the first tip, you know, I just didn't get enough on it, man. So. Tough loss, man, but, you know, we're, we're about to go on a break, man. Guys are going to be able to reset, man, and then we're going to come back and, you know, be able to finish out the season with some great basketball. Trez, just zooming out, your thoughts on the first half of the season? Um, You know, good first half of the season. Uh, You know, we played through the ups and downs, through different adversity um, from COVID to injuries um, to, you know, just learning a whole new team, man. Um, I think we got a lot more growing to do, and I think we're going to do that. Um, But... You know, this break is definitely a much needed one. And I think the guys are going to utilize it and we're going to come back uh, prepared and ready to finish off the season. Dave? Charles, you've kind of been the battery for this team all year long, um, giving your energy to everybody else, even when you know there might not be fans in the stands or whatnot. What will you do to recharge uh, over the break? Um, I'll go home and, and be a dad, you know, be a family man. Uh, 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 just be around, uh, you know, my loved ones. You know, that's what I'm, I'm going to do. Um, I'm not really going anywhere. Um, just going back home and just kind of, you know, just get away and disappear and just uh, just be around my family. Dan? Trez, um, obviously last year um, you had to adjust to playing with, with two stars. This year with, with LeBron and AD. Um, now that you've made it halfway through the season, how do you think that process is going? Um, and, and where do you think there's still room for growth with you and this team? Um, honestly, I think it's room for growth for all of us, man. We're still learning a lot of different things about our team. Uh, you know, AD's been out of the lineup these last couple of games, so we was learning how to play without him. Uh, Marcus missed these past two games. We're learning without playing without him. Um, Brian didn't play tonight, uh, who is a huge part of our, you know, everything that we do in our whole culture of basketball um, in the Lakers organization. Uh, and we, you know, played a hard-fought, tough game uh, without him. So, uh, we're still learning, we're still growing. And, you know, like I said, I think the first half of the season has been a good one. Um, but, you know, this break is a much needed one because, you know, th these guys are still, you know, uh, you know, dealing with, you know, this different things that, you know, may have occurred from the short off season and just the different turnaround that we had, man. But I think this break is going to give these guys a good chance to reset. And uh, like I said, we're going to come back ready to play some good basketball, finishing off the season uh, to, you know, make that push to try to do it again. Kyle. Hey, Travis, um, last night, um, just wondering against Phoenix doing the starting rotation, how much did that kind of chop up your flow and in, into the game? And, and did that crystallize any any conversations you had with Frank today of, about, you know, wanting to come off the bench? Um, honestly, you know, I just did what the team asked me to do. Um, you know, uh, uh, last night on us, it wanted me to start in the lineup that we had. Um, it, it was a weird flow of things. Uh, you know, they went smaller and coach felt like, you know, it was a lineup that he just wanted to have a lot more of, you know, his veteran guys, Keith and Dust, that you know, kind of been in the rotation and kind of been in the system um, to finish out the game. Um, that's all it was, man. At the end of the day, uh, I, I just do whatever it takes for us to win. And um, at least that's what I try to do. Um, and, you know, whether that's, you know, scoring, rebounds, uh, loose balls, uh, extra possession, and whatever it is. So, you know, that's all I do, and, and that's what I'm going to continue to try to keep doing 
um, as we go forward and as we come back after this break. Last question, Kahari. Hey, hey, Trez, uh, what's going on? You had told the referee, uh, speaking on the coach of uh, basketball, you had told the ref, you know, I've been saying once since I was kids. Um, can you just elaborate on why you feel like you, you need you had to tell him that? Because in, in the sense of when you're playing basketball and you're competing and you're getting after it, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, some of the referees um, and, you know, this is not bashing any referee um, in general, but, you know, we cannot be in the instance of calling the game that soft, man. Um, you know, whether me and me and you or, you know, me and whatever ref got into it, um, you know, in a verbal conversation to play before, just because, you know, you're still holding on to, to a grudge from that, you cannot come back and give me a tech. The tech that I got is definitely was a big one in the swing and definitely shouldn't have been called because at the instance of I'm not looking at her, I was nowhere near her vicinity, I'm running back on defense. And what I said was and one. No cursing, no profanity, none of that. And she turned around and gave me a tech because she was in her feelings because she felt like I was too loud with her or I belittled her when we was talking. Like, you can't bring that into the game. Like, I don't care who it is. I don't care what the situation is, man. Like, everybody on the bench, everybody in the in the, the, the arena, the, even the guy sitting at the scores table said, you, you can't do that. You you can't give a guy a tech just for saying N1. And if I'm going to get a tech for saying N1, man, then they might just take me off all year, man, because I've said way worse than that and haven't been given a tech. So this is what it is, man. I can't control that. I'm going to keep playing with the same passion and fire that I do. I didn't stop talking uh, throughout the rest of the game. I kept playing with the same fire and, um, you know, same, uh, you know, more that I have all game. So it's just what it is. Thanks so much, Trez. Have a wonderful oh. I guess the knee is calling. So say, hi, so say hello to the champion. Say hello, say hello. All these wins on the field, spiritual. They did that is magic. Welcome to the late show. I be King James version when I'm on the way. So say hello to the champ. Let's go. We just want our respect. Our organization want their respect. Laker Nation want their respect. And I want my damn respect too. They say hello to the champ. You got it, bro. LeBron James should have designed the main library at Indiana University. Urban legend has it that the library sinks over an inch every year because when it was built, engineers failed to take into account the weight of all the books. James, who's a real legend, has written the book on how to keep your career from fading. For 18 years, he's been a bestseller on the NBA's nonfiction list. And frankly, he shows no signs of sinking. I'm 36 years old, 18 years in the league. There ain't no safe something for later on. But I continue to put myself in the best condition I can be in. I train my body and I train my mind every single day. And, uh, you know, hopefully I can continue to, to do what I'm you know, doing right now at 36 um, and see what happens. You are not stopping the king. Oh, my goodness, LeBron. That's just not fair. Who else but the king? Oh, he turned the other way. He said, bet you won't make it. And in order to make a bet official, you either got to have a handshake or you got to look a man in the eye. So he said, bet it. And uh, I turned around, looked him in the eye, and I said, bet it. Good again! LeBron has 46! What a show! In his hometown. I felt like he was just a little bit too excited about seeing me miss. I knew I had another quarter. Both quarters my favorite. Don't poke the bear, don't poke the king. <laughs> 36 years old, 18th year in the league. How many games has this guy played? I don't get tired. Double overtime. The king with a giant three. LeBron, another three? Yes! My heart is not sustainable for two overtimes at this point in my career, so I was just ready to go, get home. You know, I got a bottle of wine that's been ready to be open. LeBron over the top with a one-handed stuff. This is a young LeBron James. This whole narrative of LeBron needs more rest has become a lot bigger than what it actually really is. We all need more rest. I mean, this is a fast turnaround from last season. How do you stop that? Uh, you don't. That's how you're the defending champions. <laughs> give your life to the game, because the game will give it back to you. So um, I, have a, I understand I have a responsibility that's beyond myself when I hit the floor. After a day of rage in Washington, Rioters broke windows, pushed past police, and eventually breached the Capitol. We live in two Americas, and that was a prime example of that yesterday. If those were 
uh, my kind uh, storming the Capitol, what would have been the outcome? And I think we all know. Do you understand what we're saying? Because you will never understand the feeling that we feel being a black man or being a black woman growing up in America. You know, I would never uh, shut up about things that's, um, that's wrong. There's no way uh, I will ever just stick to sports because I understand how, um, you know, how this platform and how powerful my voice is. I'm proud to be a part of a generation where our voices are heard. And we got, um, you know, a lot of guys that are speaking from the heart that didn't believe they had a voice at one point in time. Black History Month is all 12 months for me. You know, we celebrate black excellence every single day, 365 days of the year. We're spoiled watching and witnessing his greatness. The greatest player of his generation. I'm a guy who grew up reading about the game, studying the game. It's a privilege to do what I love to do, and that's to play the game of basketball, continue to inspire the youth, and for me to be linked for some of the greats that ever played this game, it's always an honor. I don't know how long I'm gonna play the game. You know, I don't know how much more I'll be able to give to the game, but the way I feel right now, we'll see what happens. The game will let me know when it's time, and, you know, and we'll figure it out then. You're sitting at home going, who put that together? His name is Tyler Drohan, works here with us in Los Angeles. Great job. Among other players in their 18th season or later, James ranks in the top five of most major categories, averaging 25.7 rebounds, seven assists per game. For the 11th time in his career, and that player efficiency rating of 24-4 is on pace to be the best by a player in his 18th season or later in NBA history. The dude is a machine. In conference, he's packing tight.